There is one apology chair from Honorable Mishwe. He is also experiencing challenges due to load sharing chair. That's the only apology. Uh, Chairperson, can I also say something? On, on, on what? I see uh, Honorable Nkosi's hand is up as well. Are we still on the item apologies? Hey, whip. Yes, Chair. Yes, Chairperson, uh, this is just uh, apologies that uh, have to do with load shedding. Uh, Honorable Muela has been trying and he's, he's still trying. He's uh, even connecting a generator because of load shedding. Muela is also suffering the same uh, 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 challenge as well. So he's also trying uh, to go somewhere else where he can get network. And Benny was coming, was going to be part of the meeting, but the child, uh, a child got sick and she's in hospital. She said she might join us late, depending what uh, the hospital process is. How long do they take? Thanks, Chair Percy. So, Honorable Mayor, Honorable Mayor, can I ask a question from you? Mm. The, the apology of hospital. Is it forwarded to Lubabalo in writing? Uh, no, Chair, uh, because she said uh, <clears throat> the, the child just got sick uh, uh, recently, so she had to rush her to the hospital. She was going to be part of the meetings, but she, did, she didn't, yeah. Yeah. So I see uh, Honorable Mola is connected. Um, is here uh, with us. I can see he's sitting in a dark. Honorable Mola, at least it was going to be better. Ah, Chairs and Pans, this side of the country, you are very underneath. There is no electricity. Honorable. Honorable Muela has uh, managed to log in thanks to the generator and resources at his disposal. He has, he has joined us. Um, yes, so, Chair, I've joined. But unfortunately, it's dark uh, here. You can't see me, Chair, but I'm, I've joined. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, honorable members, the... Uh, uh, as legislators, we are charged with the mandate of overseeing uh, the activities of the department and how the international inter international development and developments influence the way uh, our country uh, relates to other countries. And I must say that uh, the minister has championed that uh, perfectly well uh, on behalf of, of our government in the country. We are aware of the many conflicts um, in, in the hotspots in the world and in the continent. However, today we call the department to share information uh, on a developing conflict in our own backyard uh, in the northern parts of Mozambique, as we've been uh, referring to it uh, when we make contributions which is within the realm of the SADC, uh, our region. And uh, it is therefore an information sharing um, session for honorable members. Uh, honorable minister, this conflict uh, has brought home a reality that we are not immune uh, from conflict uh, in our neighborhood and across the region. As a committee responsible for international relations, we would really wish that the department uh, share information as to what the relations, uh, um, implications of uh, this conflict, and 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 that um, 
in our neighborhood, which is right in, at our doorstep, not even in our backyard. Um, the emerging threats in Mozambique uh, is indeed a matter of a great concern uh, to our society, as it is also a, a threat to the SADC region, which has thus far been considered as a beacon of peace and stability in the continent. I know, Game Minister, that um, there might be a sensitive information uh, in this meeting, whether indirectly or directly. Uh, I think we must avoid such uh, sensitive information because this meeting is an open meeting. Uh, when we are responding uh, to the questions of honorable members, uh, perhaps uh, that might emerge and, and we must find a way of uh, ensuring that uh, in this platform, uh, we, we avoid sensitivity of information and guard against it. So without uh, wasting time, I will hand over to you, uh, uh, Minister, uh, and your team. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, good evening, and uh, good evening to all the honorable members. Uh, good evening to Deputy Minister Botas. And uh, if she has joined us, because I did see her earlier, good evening to our Deputy Minister Mashiko Tlamini. Evening, EG, uh, and the team. Uh, I will be uh, assisted uh, in making the presentation a chairperson by Mr. Van Aert. We've prepared a set of uh, slides to present to the committee. But as you indicated, uh, it's a rather unusual uh, uh, matter because we're dealing with a country which has sovereign rights to uh, its own information. So we've really tried to glean information both from publicly accessible media and uh, some reference to meetings that we have been part of. I will ask uh, Mr. Van Aert to begin to uh, put the presentation uh, on the uh, online screen so that the members can see the slides and then I'll take us through them. Mr. Van Aert, are you able or can someone assist you? I don't know if the committee secretary uh, can help. Yes, Minister. Sorry, I just need to be able to share the screen. I'm currently the uh, screen sharing is disabled. Can someone enable screen sharing, please? Uh, Mr. Escuela? Hello, Chairperson. Can you uh, enable the screen, the, the screen? Okay, noted, Chairperson. I've done so, Chair. Okay. So uh, the uh, title is as indicated uh, on the slide. Uh, I was asked uh, if we could brief on the security situation in Cabo Delgado, uh, which is in northern Mozambique, as you said, Chair, and the likely impact on our foreign policy aspirations for a secure and peaceful uh, SADC region. This outlines the content that we present to the committee. And uh, we begin with a preface uh, in which we state, Chairperson, uh, that the security situation as it's unfolding, we note it as highly complex and continuously uh, evolving. Uh, I will uh, uh, speak to some of that complexity as I go through the presentation. But we are seeing, uh, in terms of uh, international research, and policy papers that there are varying schools of thought which define different causes, different drivers, different 
players in terms of uh, this conflict. We also note that the insurgency began at the inception with very basic weapons uh, being used. But we've noted that in the last few months, the weaponry in use has uh, become uh, increasingly sophisticated arms being used uh, in that region. We also note that in this year, there's been a significant escalation uh, in the number and ferocity of attacks. We speak uh, to, to the region itself, Cabo Delgado. It's a province in the northern part of Mozambique. It has as its border the countries of Tanzania, Malawi, and Zimbabwe. It's an area rich in precious uh, uh, minerals, uh, and perhaps that uh, is a signal to some of the conflict we're seeing. Uh, it has uh, rubies, uh, one of the largest deposits in the world. And of course, uh, it's the location of prime uh, liquid natural gas mega project. The uh, projects that have begun to be initiated in that region are said to have the potential to lift Mozambique into a middle-income country uh, status. Uh, colleagues would be aware that for many years, uh, Mozambique was considered a low-income uh, country, one of the poorest on the continent. But uh, should these projects come into fruition and succeed in attracting significant uh, buy-in to, to the gas, uh, it would place Mozambique, it is said, among the top 10 LNG producers in the world. The uh, threat, which we see as very uh, significant and, and worrying, is from an insurgency group that is known as al Wal Jamaa, or Al-Shabaab, as it's called in other parts of the continent. The region itself, Chairperson, in terms of its socioeconomic status, is currently faced with triple challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, the uh, violent insurgency, which we shall talk of today, as well as a growing humanitarian uh, crisis. The uh, crisis uh, uh, has its link to the insurgency, but also to the impacts of cyclones Ida and Kenneth, which both occurred in 2019 and impacted that region in particular. The region is located 2,600 kilometers from the capital Maputo. In 2010, there were apparently reports to the government in the province, as well as nationally, that uh, there is an emergence of radicalization in some parts of the province. The province has been experiencing these violent attacks since October 2017. So this is not a new conflict. The attacks began on government forces and buildings uh, and has increasingly included attacks on civilians in local villages and in the local area. In the first half of 2020, we've seen a series of attacks. These have become increasingly violent with uh, loss of life in uh, larger and larger numbers. There's sabotage against entire villages being raised, uh, civilians being attacked, the involvement and attacks on non-governmental organizations as well as religious institutions. Including the fatalities, there's been a significant internal displacement uh, in the region. More than 10% of the province's population has had to move from the areas of attack. There's also a great deal of criminal activity after towns or villages are occupied, significant looting uh, has, has occurred. 
as to the identity of the insurgents, it's not certain as to whether this is an internal, internally generated guerrilla movement that is involving into a terrorist group, or whether it is a, an established terrorist group using a guerrilla tactic while seeking political, financial, and moral support from radicalized local religious uh, grouping. The attacks, as I've said, are mainly against the local population and in institutions of the state. Thus far, there is no report of visible attacks against foreign uh, residents in the region. And all uh, Western uh, or Northern investments in the province, of which there are many, are protected by private security companies and have not really come under direct attack. The main districts that are affected are Mochambia, Dapraia, Chisanga, Muidube, and Machumia. In Machumia, for example, of the 52 villages in that particular region, 37 have experienced attacks by this insurgency group, with some having had recurrent and repetitive attacks. There's also been noted occupation of towns for extended periods, and many towns and villages are abandoned because the local residents move out following uh, these severe attacks. One of the most worrying developments has been the announcement publicly of the capture of the port town of Mojambia de Praia, which occurred uh, in mid-August. This is most worrying because it again empowers uh, this uh, insurgency in a way that uh, is of great concern to us as South Africa. So, Chairperson, what is South Africa's policy for peace and security? As part of the values enshrined in our constitution, South Africa would always seek to achieve global peace. This is part of our foreign policy, driven by our principles of Ubuntu, equality, and a search for common humanity uh, with all uh, in the globe. Uh, the colleagues in the committee will be aware that we adopted the theme of silencing the guns as a basis for development as our theme for the 2020 chair of the African Union. Thus, Chairperson, our anticipation uh, has been that 2020 would be a year that would be devoted significantly through the AU to the ending of conflict on the continent to the securing of peace so that we can in Africa focus on development. So the emergence of conflict in Mozambique is extremely worrying for us in South Africa, in particular because it reverses the uh, peace which has characterized SADC for many, many years. We've not had armed conflict in our region uh, for a very long period uh, of time. And this development, uh, which is of an unusual character for SADE, is most worrying. As South Africa, uh, we have agreed that we will intensify efforts to provide support to Mozambique to end the insecurity uh, most speedily and to limit its impact because the longer the period of this insurgency and the threat to life and livelihood, uh, the more threat there is to a broader uh, impact of these insurgents. Some of the implications arising from the conflict are, firstly, the humanitarian situation I referred to of internally displaced persons. Since the beginning of this year, I've indicated the attacks have become more violent according to sources such as the UN, the UNHCR, the UNDP, and these uh, 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 impacts have uh, encompassed a very wide 
geographic spread. The United Nations Commission on Refugees indicates that around 250,000 people have been internally displaced. This is around 10% of the population of Cabo Delgado. More than 1,100 people have lost their lives. The numbers vary depending on various sources, be it international media or local reports. And the violence has begun to impact on neighboring provinces because what is happening is the internally displaced persons are moving to other regions and sub-regions of Mozambique. We've also noted that the violence has disturbed the livelihoods of subsistence farmers who have left their land and who fear returning due to the threat of attacks. And thus you have an increase in food insecurity in that region. And this is why Chairperson uh, South Africa has been approached uh, by uh, humanitarian uh, bodies working in that region to help by providing humanitarian uh, support to the local population. Since the beginning of this year, the insurgency has gained more international attention. In the African Union, there was discussion of this growing insecurity in the assembly in February this year, and a series of side meetings were held at that meeting in order to look in detail at the situation and to try and identify how the AU might be of assistance. The insurgency has also received attention from three significant UN agencies. Firstly, the uh, uh, agency dealing with refugees, the agency uh, of the Red Cross, as well as uh, agencies looking at providing development and uh, other supports to uh, Mozambique. All of them have referred to the different elements of the conflict, the economic, the social, and the humanitarian. The UN launched early in June this year an appeal for 35.5 million US dollars in order to uh, fund a rapid response plan for Cabo Delgado, which would be implemented from uh, July to December for the humanitarian uh, uh, relief uh, that is necessary for that region. In terms of SADC, there has been uh, attention to this matter. The Republic of Mozambique, as chair of the Southern Organ on Politics, Defense and Security Cooperation, convened an extraordinary organ uh, a summit of heads of state and government in Harare uh, in May this year. The government of Mozambique was requested to provide information to relevant SADC structures to determine the type of support required from the region and also to consider the uh, development of a roadmap which Mozambique should provide to SADC to indicate how we would, uh, as SADC, work with Mozambique to address the terrorist activities in Cabo Delgado. We've also had ministerial meetings of the Interstate Defense and Security Committee and the Interstate Politics and Diplomacy Committee, which were urged to meet urgency, urgently to consider the roadmap once Mozambique has submitted it to these structures. The uh, organ troika uh, meeting directed us to explore avenues for intelligence sharing among member states as part of a joint effort to counter terrorist activities in Mozambique and terrorism in general. 
because the Troika realized in that extraordinary summit or, or acknowledged that uh, terrorism doesn't stay in one place. Once it secures a, a footing, they then look for other areas in which to carry on their criminal activities. And that is, it is important that we work together to push back uh, this development. The SADC Secretariat was asked to submit a report on the joint meeting of the uh, appropriate committees, as well as proposals to the chairperson of the organ as a matter of urgency. We were all asked as member states of SADC to support the government of Mozambique in its fight against the insurgency. Already, Mozambique is receiving support from Zimbabwe and other countries in the region uh, will be considering how to be more supportive of Mozambique. The uh, summit of heads of state and government in August welcomed the decision by the government of Mozambique to openly bring the matter to the attention of SADC so that we are all working together to combat terrorism and the attacks in that country. Summit commended Mozambique for the efforts that it has made toward uh, fighting uh, uh, this insurgency. We also expressed solidarity and commitment to support Mozambique and condemned all forms of terrorism and violent attacks against sovereign states. We also uh, recognize that the committees that have been charged to meet had not yet met in that Mozambique was being given time to finalize the preparation of the roadmap uh, that the summit of the organ Troika had directed them uh, to, to submit. The uh, summit had asked that the roadmap address both the terrorist activities, as well as sustainable ways of addressing the nexus between terrorist activities, extremism, radicalization, and the problematic member states. In other Africa, Firstly, the movement of internally distance of Mozambique seeking refuge or asylum in South Africa. Mozambique has just uh, assumed the chair of SADC, which we believe affords us an opportunity to work closely with Mozambique to strengthen cooperation between SADC and the African Union, which we chair, as well as directly between South Africa and Mozambique in our bilateral relations. We as South Africa are the incoming chair of the SADC Organ on Politics, Defense and Security, and thus we are going to be directly involved in regional peace and security matters from this year for the next three years. We also believe that a great opportunity exists for South Africa to seek to import uh, natural gas from Mozambique. And so the security of Cabo Delgado is of great interest to South Africa and our economic plans for energy diversification. We also believe the implications are that our agencies of to enhance the information gathering capacity and the data in order to allow for appropriate decisions by South Africa to be considered. Because as I said, we're getting uh, the notion that there's an internal insurgency deriving from locals, but there are also external forces. So we need to have a clear measure of what it is we're dealing with so that we know exactly what approach we should adopt as South Africa. 
we are proposing uh, that we continue our direct engagement at the level of our principals through our president, that there should be increased discussions on appropriate solutions at regional and continental levels of this conflict, that we should not delay action for too long. We also believe there should be whose mics are on, they should mute. We also believe there should be increased information sharing between Mozambique and its regional partners. Plus, given uh, the attack and targeting of the port town, we believe that increased maritime security cooperation is absolutely vital between Mozambique and South Africa, but with other international partners as well. That person, that is our briefing on uh, this uh, situation, and I stand ready uh, to answer uh, any questions uh, that honorable members might have. Thank you, Chairperson. Thanks so much, um, um, honorable minister, for quite an, an interesting uh, presentation, quite informative. Uh, I hope uh, honorable members will engage. I don't see honorable Musane here. Are you in the meeting? Yes, Chair, yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. Because I did not hear your apology. Um, honorable members, uh, I don't see hands. Uh, surely the report is very clear from the minister. If I don't see hands, it means uh, the report is clear. Hands? Okay, I see one. Honorable okay. Banza. No, uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, I think, uh, Chairperson, as uh, the minister has alluded to, and you have also alluded to, this uh, is a very informative uh, presentation. And uh, it assists us now to understand, to have a general understanding of what are the issues uh, there. And I think, Chairperson, uh, it will be important for us uh, to respect the sovereignty uh, of the Mozambique uh, as a country and, and not to be seen as uh, trying to make uh, in the affairs uh, of, of, of Mozambique. But however, <clears throat> We can't be bystanders uh, because these are our neighbors. Whatever happens there, uh, it can have uh, implications, as the presentation by the minister has alluded to. We, it's important that as the members of this committee uh, assist with the developments there, and then we support uh, the initiatives that uh, our 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 government uh, is yeah. taking in actually to uh, yeah. fulfill the agenda of peace in, of of keeping peace uh, in, in, in 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 the South Asia and in the uh, African continent uh, as a whole, uh, in line with the agenda of the silencing of the guns. So, so Chair, I think for me, uh, it's for us maybe to just take this information and then be guided by 
the further uh, engagement that uh, our government uh, through the structures that uh, the minister has uh, alluded to, the Troika, uh, SADC, and, uh, and, 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 and all of that. Uh, and then <laughs> later on, Chairperson, I think if we can then have another follow-up meeting where maybe we should be giving a presentation where we'll have uh, in-depth discussions uh, on, on how far are those interventions and engagements that uh, our country uh, will, be, will, be, will be involved in and are they bearing any positive fruits or are there more any challenges? So I think for me, Chairperson, uh, it's just uh, really to note uh, this information is very much empowering and, uh, and then uh, uh, allow space for the structures, the relevant structures to engage on the issue and uh, the countries that are affected to engage in, the, in a way of trying to uh, find the lasting solution uh, to, the, to the challenges that uh, Mozambique is facing. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Mbanda. Uh, Honorable Msani, I see few ends today because is it because we are not uh, talking Israel and Palestine? Honorable Msani, followed by the Honorable Ngoz. Thank you very much, Chairperson. And thank you to the Minister for the presentation. Although it assists the committee to receive the presentation prior to the meeting so that we can prepare ourselves. But uh, Minister, we know that uh, to 15 international conventions and protocols against terrorism, including the AU. And uh, we also know that uh, there's Article 6 one of the SADC Mutual Defense Pact, which uh, stipulates that an attack on a state party shall be considered a threat to the regional peace and security, and such attack shall be met with immediate uh, collective action. Why uh, hasn't the SADC region actually acted immediately, noting that um, this happened since 2017. You also mentioned that the summit of the Troika had this item on its agenda and uh, tasked Mozambique. This was in May of this year, tasked Mozambique to bring intelligence. Um, and by the, by the way, the minister has presented, it looks like intelligence has not come forward for the, the SADC body to, to act on it. So also, we also had a, fourth, a 40th annual summit, Minister, in August, which also would have dealt with this issue on the 17th of August, which also would have dealt with this issue. So it gives a, a, a feeling that the, the SADC body is either slow to act with regards to this um, terrorism act, or you know, relying on efforts that Mozambique should bring us intelligence. Also, they are they are they are not acting with speed. So, um, also, Minister, why hasn't the SADC maybe sent uh, a delegation to go on a fact-finding mission on the current status after basically the capture of that? Uh, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll excuse my pronunciation of, of the big port, the Mosiambu, <laughs> the pride, the price. That's, that's uh, why uh, Mozambique in developing partners, also the AU, to put it on its peace and security agenda. I know that the AU waits for the subject body to be the first one to act before they can act. Um, as Minister has also highlighted that these, um, these captures are, are mainly on the biggest three districts in Mozambique, which are important. And when I did a bit of research, it, it is noted that 
the, the military increase of weapons by these terrorists are found on, on army bases in Mozambique, where it mentions that in Bao, they, they, they took a military base, these terrorists. Also, Minister, they, they, they come, I, I, I've, I've, I've done a little bit of research where it says that there was a South African National Defense Force that was deployed in 2011 to Cabo de Gado um, on a piracy patrol. Is it not possible that we can also use intel that was gathered during that time in order to assist especially the, the maritime because uh, figuring out the private security that Mozambique is using, they do not special also a presentation mentions that we need to look at the, the, the maritime the, the, because they, they are attacking it that impacts the research and the intel that uh, SADC is currently waiting for from Mozambique. And Minister also saw that uh, Mozambique is using a, a private military called Dyke Advisory Group, which was also involved in, uh, in the army in, in Zimbabwe during the, 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 the Matebele. Um, the, uh, Minister, if you can just brief us using uh, private military companies, because there was also one that was mentioned, which was involved in, by the USA to, to go and fight in Iraq. And the, the regime that wanted to overthrow Colonel Gaddafi. So if these private military, because also this one that is in the of, of, of Dyke, uh, is, is said to be a business partner of Nangangwa. So these people seem to be highly infiltrated and highly knowledgeable of, uh, seem to be stirring problems in the continent, but it seems like the African Union or different African states, can we not um, move into maybe increasing our own, our own African military instead of using um, this, these private companies. And can SADC not consider reviewing its 2011 True. strategy because the security that we are using in Mozambique clearly very time supports. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Chair. Am I audible? Am, am I? Uh, I, I had to drive out and, and find space where there's signal. It goes, we, I'm can, hear signal. we can hear you, Honorable. Okay. okay. So I note what uh, what has been raised by Honorable Musani, but I think it was indicated that this is a complex matter and it's an ongoing issue that involves situation in our region. And therefore, we suggest that we regard it as such on which we, could, we should continue to be briefed by the department, particularly when uh, there are sharp uh, escalations and what interventions the country makes to and leave it at Thanks, Chair. Who else is raising a hand? No one. Ne Minister, over to you. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, firstly, with respect to uh, the Honorable um, Panza's question, uh, he's absolutely right uh, that, you know, uh, it's very uh, difficult. South Africa cannot act as a sole uh, unmandated actor in this matter, uh, we would have to uh, work very closely uh, with SADC 
and uh, should it be necessary uh, with the African Union. But SADC has it within itself uh, to develop uh, responses to this challenge. And I think uh, that we certainly uh, uh, are not uh, sitting by as bystanders. But I think it's important that I make it clear that I'm not a spokesperson of Mozambique. So I can't answer all the questions the Honorable Msani uh, has tabled. I will attempt to respond to some, but uh, Mozambique is a sovereign country. If it seeks assistance from any of us, it would ask for it. Should we be uh, under threat as South Africa, we must be ready to respond. So that would be my response for South Africa. But should South Africa be jumping into Mozambique with its, uh, without any request from the country, without any indication as to where it needs help? I'm not sure that we can do that. Uh, various uh, conventions. Um, the conventions don't say uh, that we act without any uh, recourse to the sovereigns has been engaging uh, with our various countries. And we are all looking at how uh, we might assist them. This is why uh, we have said to them, develop a roadmap. Tell us what it is you actually need. If it is more intelligence support, if it is the South African Navy uh, patrolling uh, the coast, if it is uh, assistance from our defense force, we as South Africa stand ready. But we must have that indication from the government of Mozambique. Um, we certainly are awaiting provision of the information SADC has agreed Mozambique should provide and which Mozambique has indicated it will provide to the region in the way of a roadmap which our security co uh, committees would then deliberate upon and identify the areas on which we might be prepared to act. So uh, I, I don't think uh, we can send a delegation uh, uh, to the uh, port city to find out uh, what occurred. We must be guided as any other country would be should we have a similar situation, God forbid, uh, in South Africa, we would have to be guided by what South Africa would tell its neighbors and the appropriate bodies it needs as assistance or support. Um, there have been uh, reports in the media and much of the research uh, that all of us are reading is really in, in a, a lot of the media. It, it's not coming from government sources. Uh, we're not sure whether the information is authenticated, uh, but the information uh, the Honorable Msani shared is information all of us have access to. What we did was to the best of our ability, get information that uh, we could say is authentic. As to uh, some of the areas raised that, uh, the weapons are from military bases. I indicated uh, that there has been an increasing sophistication of the weaponry being used. I'm not sure that the source of that weaponry is the army or the army bases in the Cabo Delgado uh, region. I don't have uh, that information. Um, yes, certainly we played a role uh, in 2011 when there was a piracy threat on the southern coast. And it was very important that the South African Navy and the South African Defense Force plays a role in that regard. And should such resources be required, again, it's country to country and would be something South Africa should consider if it is approached. The matter of uh, financial resources and what aid might be given, uh, if required, will depend on the roadmap Mozambique has agreed it will prepare. We ask that that roadmap includes an indication of what resources are required, be they human, 
financial or other uh, levels of support. On the Dyke uh, military group, from the information we have available to us, this private military company is hired by the government of Mozambique. They haven't gone there as mercenaries. They are hired by the state. That's the information uh, we have. So I don't know whether hiring them suggests infiltration, but they are paid by the state of Mozambique, according to what we have been told. Um, I certainly think uh, that once we have an indication in definitive terms from Mozambique, we might uh, have to look at what form of intervention would be most appropriate. And given that this is in occurring, these in attacks are internal on a land mass and are not at sea, obviously the 2011 uh, uh, intervention uh, against piracy would not be the model that should be followed. But that will be determined by security organs who are best placed to develop a plan, depending again on what Mozambique uh, uh, requests. Um, I agree with the honorable member who said uh, we must continue to provide briefings. And once we have uh, uh, more information and as information uh, uh, increases, and particularly once this roadmap is provided, I'm sure uh, the state, perhaps through our head of state, uh, would make uh, the necessary uh, statements. And to the best of my ability, uh, as uh, the Department of International Relations of South Africa, not of Mozambique, I stand ready to provide uh, any information we might have uh, to the Portfolio Committee. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, Honorable Member, you I, I is your hand up, Honorable Nkosi and Honorable Msani again? No, Chairperson. Uh, mine is, I didn't know. No, no Chair. No, no. Is there any other Honorable Member um, that has a hand up? Sorry, Chair. Yes. Can I come back? Yes. Minister, I just wanted to check. Um, what is your feel with these private military companies in the African continent? Um, you know, in diplomacy, uh, you're asked not to state your feel. It's not a good thing for a minister of international relations. Uh, uh, to have in the field of diplomacy, because whatever I say will be carried uh, all over. Uh, however, I do believe uh, that as Africa, we need to develop our own internal resources within the public sector to be able to execute on the basis of our constitutional framework, the defense of our nations. This is the position uh, with respect to South Africa, but countries are different and have different uh, capacity. So uh, I can't uh, state a definitive uh, position for the entire continent, but my uh, ideal would be that we have a, a, a developed set of different uh, forces within the defense sector that are able to support our countries to achieve and secure uh, peace. Uh, SADC is playing a very important role, as you would know, as the Force Intervention Brigade in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And this is something that I believe signals the capabilities of SADC with uh, Malawi, uh, Tanzania, and South Africa uh, playing a leading role in the forces providing support in the Eastern DRC. And it is that kind of capacity that we need to uh, ensure we provide, you know, proper support to, and that all uh, our countries have similar uh, civilian uh, directed uh, defense forces. But uh, if I'm under threat and there's someone who can assist me, I suppose if I don't have the capacity, I will reach out for that which might assist. 
Uh, thank you, Minister. Minister, I just want to check uh, to what extent has these uh, uh, attacks and instability in, in, in Mozambique has affected their economic growth and also um, uh, other, other, other people um, who placed a funding uh, probably to government uh, for for infrastructure development and 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 to stabilize also the the economy of that particular country how has it impacted and do we as a as a country and or as a southern region have plans to assist if the economy or the economic growth and development of that particular region is affected. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. That's a really important question. And let me uh, begin to answer it by saying all of us should uh, recognize that the impact of the insurgency is made worse by the instance of COVID-19 which has caused many of our economies to actually stagnate. Um, Mozambique, as uh, the committee members would know, uh, in the lead up, the decade leading up to 2011, 2012, was among the top 20 uh, high GDP countries on the African continent. Uh, uh, more uh, recently, and particularly given the impact uh, of COVID-19, there has been a stall uh, uh, to their economic growth, and there is great concern, especially among partners, as to the development uh, uh, direction uh, of, of Mozambique. So there are concerns because any conflict does impact uh, the great investment and attraction of foreign direct investment had focused on the uh, natural gas in the Cabo del uh, Delgado region. There are many foreign companies, including South African companies, that have uh, targeted investment uh, to that uh, uh, gas resource. So the fact that it is now difficult to operate in the area does cause challenges to the continued economic development uh, of Mozambique. But uh, I do think, uh, we would need to uh, carefully examine uh, the facts around the question that you pose. It's not one that has really been dealt with substantively in much of the reading I have uh, seen, uh, primarily because, as I said earlier, uh, economic activity continues within the gas sector. There hasn't been significant attack, for example, on tourist uh, facilities, it's the local population that appears to be the target of these uh, uh, groupings, local public institutions. Uh, uh, so there is a, an aspect to this that appears to be very much directed at state institutions and the civilian uh, uh, population. Uh, in terms of companies that are owned by countries from the north, as well as South African-owned uh, companies, we haven't seen uh, the levels of vicious onslaught uh, uh, that is evident uh, in the sectors I've referred to. So this matter of economic impact, I think, is something that is worthy of further scrutiny. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Honorable Mpanza, I don't know what happened to the chairperson. I think she got kicked out.
His honorable and pants are gone as well. Yeah. I understand. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much, Minister. This system kicked me out uh, because of the network problems. And then, boom, I'm back again. So that's the order of load shedding. And uh, I can see Honorable Bachman is, is smiling at that. Uh, honorable members, uh, is there any other a honorable member that wants to have a bite. Okay. No, sir, at, I think every, I think everything is clear. At this point, uh, honorable Ngoda, are you serious? At this point, um, honorable members, um, I want to thank the minister and her team. Uh, Deputy Minister Alvin Bortes and Deputy Minister Ekendis Masiho uh, for sharing such an informative um, a session and presentation uh, for us as a portfolio committee. At least when we are asked tomorrow about what is happening in Mozambique, we'll be able to speak uh, on, on that from an informed viewpoint, not from uh, the newspaper reports, as the case is always a B. The portfolio committee um, must note or is noting uh, the report as presented by the minister. And minister, I want to say this should not be uh, the last briefing on Mozambique. Uh, because Mozambique is is very is very close home, uh, so such briefings, even if you feel that you need to brief the committee, you are welcome uh, to write uh, to the chair to say uh, you you want uh, to brief the portfolio committee. I think also, uh, honourable members, uh, I must take this opportunity and thank uh, the minister for leading this department to a right direction. This department is the only one throughout the country that has adhered to treasury regulations uh, on the issue of the PPEs. Those who have not heard that, I'm sharing it with you uh, today. Um, we need to really applaud uh, the department uh, for a job well done uh, under the stewardship of Minister Naledi and the two deputy ministers that are working side by side with her. So as a portfolio committee, we must not shy away from giving credit where it's due. It is important uh, for us to encourage um, the team uh, of DERCO uh, under the stewardship of the DG, who is under the stewardship of the minister and everyone else. So um, in those ways, um, honorable members, uh, without uh, wasting time, um, we adjourn the meeting. Um, tomorrow, uh, parliament is, is rising. Um, surely we are going to meet uh, on the streets, um, working in our constituencies, but that doesn't mean uh, that communication and interaction as and when a need arises uh, should stop. And from time to time, we will touch base with you, Minister, on certain issues because your department is seized with a lot of things and with the coronavirus uh, challenges in our country and, and throughout the world. Uh, your department has not uh, rested. Uh, you've been working uh, around the clock. Uh, thank you very much, honorable members. Um, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Well, you can, we can, we want